All right, welcome to today's lesson on scientific notation. Today, we are going to be taking very large and very small numbers and writing them in scientific notation, but also taking them and writing them in standard notation. So today's question of the day um, may not apply. Some calculators are superstars, but uh, how many digits can fit in your calculator before your calculator just gives up? Um, this guy takes quite a few, and I know that the uh, TI-83 takes quite a few, or is it the 84? I don't remember. I know they can take a lot of digits, but when does the calculator stop accepting them? There is a point. <laughs> One gram of hydrogen has 602 sextillion hydrogen atoms. So in chemistry, we deal with very, very large and very, very small numbers. For example, the mass of a single gold atom um, is that many zeros. That's a lot. I don't know how many zeros this is without counting, but it's it's quite a few. Um, so that would be the mass of just one single gold atom. Uh, we use very large and very small numbers all the time in science. And for that reason, we use scientific notation to write them because number one, um, there is a maximum amount of numbers that can fit in your calculator. And number two, the more zeros you're writing, or putting in the calculator, the more error you are subject to, the easier it is to make a mistake. So we use scientific notation to account for all of that. And also we use scientific notation to um, save us on the number of significant figures occasionally when we have some funky measurements. So breaking down scientific notation, the numbers out in front of the times 10 to the, that's called the coefficient. And that coefficient follows the rules for significant figures. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, right there as it's written, has three significant figures, the 6, the 0, and the 2. The coefficient should be a number that's greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. A lot of kids would write 602 times 10 to the 21st, in this case, I think that's kind of what you pick up from math class. In science, we like our scientific notation to be between 1 and 10 whenever we can. On the back of the times 10 to the is the exponent. And this is a common error, so I'm going to tell it to you, but realize that I'm telling you a common mistake that kids make. A lot of kids would think that this 23 means that there's 23 zeros behind this number, behind 602. That's not the case. The 23 or the exponent is going to tell you the number of times the decimal needs to move in order to get your number into standard notation. So 602, you're gonna move the decimal twice to get it behind the two, and then you'll have 21 more jumps that need to be filled. So it's gonna be 602 with 21 zeros, which um, you can go back to that right here, 602 and 21 zeros. We need to um, be really careful with that because it's super easy to make a mistake. That's why we use scientific notation in the first place. But um, it's important to recognize that's not the number of zeros. It's the number of times the decimal moves. Anytime you have a number in scientific notation with a positive exponent, it means that your number is greater than 1. So 2.0 times 10 to the third is really 2,000. You take this decimal and you move it three places, which would give us three zeros. This is a coincidence that they're the same number. Um, the number of jumps and the number of zeros is the same. Coincidence. But positive exponents indicate that our number is greater than one. Negative exponents tell us that our number is less than 1. So here we have 4 times 10 to the negative second. In this case, you're going to move the decimal still two times, but you're going to move it in the direction that makes your number smaller. So you're going to move it out to the left. And in this case, you move it two places. So you would move it in front of the 4, move it once again, and you'll have a 0 in front of the 4. I like this leading 0. I think it helps to prevent mistakes. Um, so I always include it. Now, I was kind of getting to this before. If you are in standard notation and need to get into scientific notation, if you're working with a big number, you're going to move your decimal to the left in order to get your coefficient between 1 and 10. So we would move the decimal, which is not written, but it's really back here. We would move that six places to get it between the 5 and the 8. And because we're working with a large number, that is a positive 
exponent. So 5.8 million or 5,800,000 is 5.8 times 10 to the sixth. You move the decimal six times. And notice here that times 10 to the sixth does not indicate six zeros. It indicates six decimal moves. Now, if we wanted to take a standard notation number and turn it into scientific notation, but that number was a small number, a number less than one, we're going to move the decimal to the right. Again, we're going to try to make our coefficient between one and ten. So if we move the decimal this way, we would want to put it between the three and the four so that our coefficient is 3.4. When we do that, we're going to move the decimal and we're going to count it five times. One, two, three, four, five. Five times you have to move the decimal to get it between the three and the four. And because this number is a small number, less than one, it's a negative exponent. So it would be 3.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. If ever you truly have a negative number, um, that needs to be converted into scientific notation, the negative would be in front of the whole number. Um, the negative on the exponent just tells you it's a tiny number. Now I know that trying to remember which direction to move the decimal is tricky. I even sometimes get it wrong. So I just tell myself, get that coefficient between one and 10 and go from there. When you have tiny numbers, it's gonna be moving to the right. When you have big numbers, it's gonna be moving to the left to get your coefficient between one and 10. And here is the opposite. We'll have a number in scientific notation that we try to get into standard notation. When we have a positive exponent, it means we're getting bigger. <laughs> positive is big in scientific notation. So if I want 4.9 to be a bigger number, I'm gonna move all of those, I think I'm mirror imaged. <laughs> I'm gonna move all of those decimals. There we go. We're gonna move all the decimals to the right. We're going to move the decimal to the right in order to get 4.9 to be a big number because positive is big. So we're going to move to the right eight times. So we're going to move behind the nine and then seven more times, which is going to be 490 million. That's a lot. <laughs> Again, seven zeros, but the exponent is eight because the exponent tells us the number of times the decimal has moved. From 4.9 to 490 million, we had to move the decimal eight times. Now, remember, negative exponents indicate a small number. So if I have a scientific notation that has a negative exponent, and I want to turn that into standard notation, I'm going to have to move my decimal in such a way that I get a small number, which is to the left. I'm going to move the decimal in 7.1 times 10 to the negative sixth to the left. Sorry, I'm mirror imaged. We're going to move to the left six times in order to get my number in standard notation. So here we would have one, two, three, four, five zeros in front of the seven and the one. The exponent does not match the number of zeros. The exponent matches the number of times you have to move the decimal. I can't even read this number, it's so tiny. <laughs> I'm sure you've put two and two together at this point, but just in case you missed it, anytime there is an empty jump when you're doing these conversions, you're gonna fill them in with zeros. All right, I'm gonna walk you through a few of these examples of converting scientific notation into standard notation. So right here, I'm working with a positive exponent, which means I'm working with a big number. And I want to get this to standard. If it's a big number, I'm going to have to move my decimal back to the right so that my number gets bigger, and I'm going to move it seven times. So 7.2, I would have one jump there, and then I need six more, and I'm going to fill each of those with a zero. So I have seven, two, and that counts as my first jump, and then I'm going to add six more. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm going to add my commas back so that I can read this number nicely. And that came out to 72 million. All right, next up is 3.4 with a negative exponent, indicating that I am moving my number such that it will be a smaller number. So that would mean my decimal goes more to the left. I'm going to move that decimal three times. So I actually kind of like to write these backwards. Um, 
here's the three and the four. And then um, my decimal started out between the three and the four. One jump would put me there. Um, then I need two more. So that's one and two. And that gives me the total number of jumps there. And then I like the leading zero out front. Um, but that one doesn't count in my decimal jumps because the decimal is not in front of that one. So here we have 0 0.0034. 5.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Again, I'm working with a negative number. So my number overall is a very tiny number. And like I said, I like to write them backwards. Um, we have the five and the eight, and that's a very ugly eight. So I'm going to redo it. No, why would you erase? We have the five and the eight. The decimal was between the five and the eight, but right now I'm putting it in front of the five. So that's one move. Here's two, three, four, and five. And there we have it. Point zero 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 five eight. All right, next up we are going to take these very large and very small numbers and convert them into scientific notation. So I know first off I want my coefficient to be 3.8 because I know that I want my coefficient to be between um, 1 and 10. And my decimal is currently back here and I know I'm going to have to move it between the three and the eight. So um, I can skip count for this because we're working in groups of three here separated nicely by the comma. So that's three jumps and that's another three. That's six plus one more is seven jumps. So I know that this is going to be 3.8 times 10 to the positive seventh because I'm working with a big old number. Next up is a lot of leading zeros and a two, so my uh, coefficient is going to be two. There's nothing behind it, so I'm not going to add a zero. Um, that technically adds a significant figure. Here you only have um, one significant figure, so I want my scientific notation to also reflect that I have um, one significant figure. So this is just going to be two, and I'm going to multiply that by ten to the something, I might have to count how many jumps I have, and that is one, two, three, four, five, six. To get behind the two would be seven. So that is uh, two times 10 to the negative seventh, and I know it's a negative seven because I'm working with a very tiny number. Next up, 85,000 would convert my coefficient to be 8.5. And the question is, how many jumps do I have to take to do that? Um, the more you do these, the better you get. We have a decimal back here. If we move one, two, three, one more gives me four. That's a positive four because I'm working with a really big number. And finally, um, zero, 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 five, six. I want my coefficient to be 5.6. I would have to move one, two, three, plus one more is four. So this would be times 10 to the negative fourth. And that is taking some standard notations and getting them into scientific. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next lesson. And I'll see you there. Bye.